Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial on production and planning. Uh, in our previous tutorial, we were uh, we had calculated um, our production plan on a monthly basis. Uh, we had our uh, units forecasted to sell and which gave us a total production plans on a monthly basis in uh, row 11. And we calculated our utilization and we took this production plan, this total production of 342 units, and we determined the allocation of uh, that total production number against three of the products that we manufacture and sell. So for example, in February, as a recap, we're planning to sell 154 units, uh, 75 units of product B and 113 of product C. We calculated the formulas on that. When we added up the uh, total production on each of these units on a monthly basis, we got a total here. So in February, for example, we arrived at 342. When we check this balance against our total plan on row 11, it's 342. So this, again, tells us that we have correctly calculated and allocated uh, our production uh, plans for each of the items. And that holds true all the way across the bottom here. So again, uh, for July, our total allocations between the three products added up to 349, which balances our production plan. So we're good. Uh, we took that a step further and we took that monthly uh, production plan and we broke it down to a, you know, a daily basis on a master production schedule. So for example, for every day in, Fe for every day in February, uh, we have 20 working days per month. We're going to produce tw uh, eight products of widget A, four products of widget B, and six uh, products of widget C. And again, we see the alloc total allocation of those three uh, items on a daily basis, uh, totaling up to 17, which matches our planned production schedule for each day in February. And the same, hold tr the same holds true uh, for each month. You'll notice that the total match on the bottom here matches the uh, total units planned to produce on a daily basis on row 14. Please um, review the previous uh, uh, tutorials if you need to on how we uh, calculated this. So now that we've got these plans in place, we know how many units we're going to produce and we know what our forecasted sales are and what our you know forecasted units to sell are, we can now move to um, the financial planning portion of our uh, product planning and production. Okay, so we'll select this, uh, the tab here of financial results. Now this is going to be what's referred to as a pro forma statement or it could be a budget. It's simply a plan. This isn't an actual result. This is our planned financial results. When the month, you know, as each month is completed, we will then compare our actual financial statements against our, our planned, okay, as well as all our costs. So what we're gonna do now is down here, to explain how this works, we have our fixed costs down here, and we have determined that our fixed costs uh, for this example includes rent, salaries, benefits, insurance, equipment rental, and office supplies, okay? Um, and again, fixed costs are those costs that do not change or fluctuate with any generation of sales or production. So in other words, if we shut down our plant and didn't sell a single item for an entire month, these fixed costs would still have to be paid. So what we need to do now is we need to determine our variable costs, which are the same as standard costs, and also referred to as costs of goods. Now, I want to point something out here in case you, you know, happen to notice looking at this spreadsheet. Um, we're going to calculate for each month our total cost of direct materials per unit. We've determined that to be $19. And our direct labor cost per unit at 26. Now, again, to keep things simple for these tutorials, uh, we are using the same cost of material and labor for each of these items, just as we had used a single retail price for each of these items, just to keep it simplified. And real world applications, of course, this would you know spread out quite a bit because you're, you're gonna have different costs associated uh, with each of your items that you're producing with respect to materials and labor. So uh, now to calculate our total direct materials for February, we know that we have 
planned to sell 347 units. So our direct material cost is simply going to be our total planned sale, uh, sell of units times the cost of $19. So I'll just enter in the formula equals E7, our 347 uh, units planned to sell, times the value and D8, or $19. Now, um, I want to make this, or you want to make this uh, value in cell D8, you want to make this an absolute cell reference. Oops. Cell reference, so that when you drag this formula across, it will pick up all these different uh, units that were forecasting to sell, but it will maintain this $19 uh, on the cell D8 here. So let's grab that fill handle and drag it across. Okay, now let's just check July's, make sure our formula and results, expected results copied properly. So we look up here in our formula bar and we can see that it's equal to J7, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the uh, 330 uh, units that we're uh, planning to sell times the value in D8 is $19. Now you may be asking yourself, why are we calculating our direct materials cost on our planned units sold instead of our planned units of production? Because this is really what we're producing. Well, we do that <clears throat> because this is considered a cost of goods. So cost of goods, we recognize those as expenses as units are sold or are planned to sell. Any other costs uh, associated with the production of inventory, if you will, is left on the balance sheet as an asset. And then inventories are taken at the end of each month and then adjustments are made uh, to the cost of goods. So that's why we're calculating this off of units sold and not units produced because this is gonna be a pro forma income statement. So while we have this described as total standard cost, it also can be considered cost of goods sold. Okay, so now let's calculate our direct labor in units. Be a similar formula. <clears throat> we'll take the value in E7, our forecasted units to be sold, and we'll multiply that by the value found in D9, our labor cost per unit. <coughs> Excuse me, and we're gonna make that an absolute cell reference as well. Tab, then Select this cell, grab your fill handle, and drag it across. There we go. Next, what we want to do, let's just check this cell. Let's, this is a rule to make sure everything worked out. So J7, that's our 330 units, times D9, $26. Okay, so that formula is correct. Everything copied over properly. So now we want to add up our total standard cost, or cost of goods, as it were. And that's simply just going to be our total direct materials, um, forecasted for February along with our direct labor cost. Just a simple formula is going to equal E8 plus E9. Okay, click on the, uh, that cell, grab your fill handle and drag it across. Let's check the value here for July. We've picked up, you can see here, J8 plus J9. So that's our total direct materials and our total, total direct labor. Beautiful. All right, now we need to calculate our gross margin. This could also be considered, or pardon me, our contribution margin. This could also be you know, considered gross margin, for example. And it's simply going to be our forecasted sales minus our total standard costs. Okay, so we'll put in the formula um, E6 minus our total standard costs or cost of goods sold in E10. Okay, tab over. Let's select the cell again, grab the fill handle, and drag it across. Let's check July, make sure we've picked it up correctly. J6, that's our forecasted cell sales, minus J10, which is our standard cost. Again, I always caution, don't rush through these spreadsheets. Always check and make sure that the formulas that you've entered, especially when you're copying them across, you're picking up the correct cell references. As I've always said, just because Excel gives you a number after you put it in a uh, formula doesn't necessarily mean it's the correct number if you've put in a cell reference where you're picking up uh, a different variable than you expected. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to calculate our total expenses. 
Our total expenses are going to consist of all our fixed expenses here for our rent right down to our office supplies, plus our total standard cost or cost of goods sold. So we can enter in a formula equals sum, open parenthesis, and we can put in the range, okay, to pick up our fixed cost of E13 to E18. So E13, let's just use a colon here, to E18, and you'll see now that uh, with a close parenthesis, and you can see now that Excel is highlighted exactly what you want to pick up so that you know you have uh, entered in the correct range, okay? Plus, we want to pick up our total standard costs in E10, so E10, okay? And you can see that's been highlighted. Looking up here, you can see equals sum E13 to E18 plus E10. Beautiful. Let's tab. So we have a total expenses for February 68,547. Let's highlight that cell now, grab our fill handle and drag it over. Lastly, we want to we want to calculate our net income, or as it's identified here as EBITDA, which is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. All those things are left out. And this is simply going to be our total sales minus our total expenses. Okay, so equals E6, our total sales, minus our total expenses that we can find in E19. Okay, and we can see both those cells have highlighted so that we've known, we know that we've uh, captured the correct variables. Select tab and click on the cell again just to grab our fill handle and drag it over. Let's select the uh, July result in uh, J20 just to you know double check our formula. We can see our formula is equal to J6 minus J19. Here's J6 and J19 is our total expenses. Okay, so that's it. We have just produced a pro forma income statement or EBITDA statement as it were based on uh, our projections that we've calculated our uh, sales forecast and we've also based it on the uh, total number of units that we are forecasting to sell. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to take this one step further and we are going to take this financial information and we're going to break down profitability by product so we can see what our planned profit is on each of the items that we sell. Till then, take care and we will see you soon.